In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you here this evening for this special Mass in memory of Mina McGrath Monaghan. Welcome all who have travelled some long journeys to be here today. I welcome all who join us via the webcam. I welcome my colleagues, Father Frank and Father Niall Martin. I appreciate your presence here. Today, we gather as a faith community for this memorial mass to remember Mina and all, and to give thanks for her kindness and goodness. For us who believe in Jesus and the resurrection, death is not the end of life, but rather the beginning of a new life in heaven. We give thanks today for Mina's life, an example for all she did to help and support others during her life, and especially for the love she shared with Tom and Kelly. I offer deepest sympathy to Tom, Kelly, son-in-law, Mickey, Dooley, to Mina's sisters, Mairead, Catherine, Ita, to her brothers, John and Porrick, all their families, and all Mina's friends here and in New York. Mina passed away on the 17th of February in New York City Hospital, University Hospital. And today, in accordance with her wishes, we come together here in her native Edirne to give thanks for her life. And tomorrow, we bury her ashes in Muncha in the family plot, burial plot. We pray that God will grant her peace and joy in the home prepared for us, where there's no more suffering or sorrow. So we pause, as always, at the beginning of Mass to thank God, to ask God's forgiveness for our feelings and for our strength to continue on the way of Jesus, to work to bring about healing to the earth and to all of creation. For the times we feel, we ask forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Mina, also find new strength. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Now I invite... The first reader to come forward, please. A reading from the book of the Apostle. Apocalypse. I, John, heard a voice from heaven say to me, Write down, Happy are those who die in the Lord. Happy indeed, the Spirit says. Now they can rest forever after their work, since their good deeds go with them. The word of the Lord. my Lord, 
deep within my being, O oh, the word of my Lord, you have filled my mind. I know that you are very young, but I will make you strong. I'll fill you with my word, and you will travel through the land, fulfilling my command, which you have heard, O oh, the word of my Lord, deep within my the word of my Lord, you have filled my Second reading, a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that when the tent that we live on on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made by human hands in the heavens. We are always full of confidence then when we remember that to live in the body means to be exiled from the Lord, going as we do by faith and not by sight. We are full of confidence, I say, and actually want to be exiled from the body and make our home with the Lord. Whether we are living in the body or are exiled from it, we are intent on pleasing him. For all the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ, and each of us will get what he deserves for the things he did in the body, good or bad. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated.
Mina McGrath, Lee Monaghan, grew up in the townland of Money Vries. Monaghan's was a busy house. There was a shop attached to the house. It was the Tesco of those days. It was situated beside Money Vries Primary School where we all went to school at that time, and next door to the old chapel, as we called it, and still called. When we had money, we went to PJs to buy penny chews and Paris buns, if we could afford them. I loved Paris buns. Two pence halfpenny each, I think. Mrs. Monaghan, Sarah, was ever so patient with some unruly boys. In the 1960s, life began to change, even in Money Vries. First, the old chapel closed down. Then, Money Vries Primary School closed. And eventually, Monaghan Shop closed. The Beatles arrived, so did the show bands. Philomena Begley, a past pupil of Money Vries School, was to become one of the leading country and Irish singers in Ireland at the time. Mina herself had a special interest in music and singing. She knew the words to all the songs. She liked the country music that was becoming popular at that time, and she loved to join in a sing-song. She also had a great interest in fashion and style of all forms. In those days, there was a song out, if you remembered, Putting on the Style. It's a long time ago. I will tell you a story about Mina. Mina liked, as I say, to dress well. She had a near neighbor, some of you may remember, called Alice McCarn. Of course, nothing went past Alice. One day, Alice was in the shop, and another customer came in, and she asked Alice if she was going to Belfast. Why would I be going to Belfast? Oh, to see Princess Margaret, she says. Well, indeed I'm not. Sure, I don't have to go to Belfast to see the style. Can't I see it here across the road? Referring to me now. Anyway, sometime in the late 1960s, or perhaps the early 1970s, a romance began in Money Vries, which eventually led to a marriage in New York City. I only discovered the romance quite by accident in 1972, I think, or 73, when I was uh, in Monaghan at the time. I met Mina and Tom in Monaghan town one evening. They were looking for a jeweler. They didn't say what their business was. But I knew from that day on that they were deeply in love. Tom and Mina headed for the United States, for New York City, and were married there on the 28th of August, 1977. Father Sean, rest his soul, officiated at the marriage. And Tom will tell us all about it and the honeymoon later at the end of Mass. It was in July 1980 that I arrived in New York City on a year off from my diocese. 
I knew no one in Manhattan except Tom and Mina. And I contacted them, and they made me most welcome, allowing me to stay in their apartment for a month or so till I found my feet. I was well fed in their pub restaurant at that time called Molly McGuire's. On the, in, right in the middle of Manhattan. I have still to collect the check and pay. During that time, Mina and Tom were most hospitable to me and generous. I will never forget their kindness to me. New York was a crazy place at the time, dangerous too. I felt secure staying with Tom and Mina in mid-Manhattan, even though I felt at first like a fish out of water. I soon began to feel at ease in the city that never sleeps. Tom was always a larger-than-life character, jovial, good at pulling your leg, Mina was more reticent. She was not one for the limelight, but was happy for Tom to be there and supported him in every way that she could. It's a wonderful love story. We give thanks today, this Mass, that they persevered and remained close all through the 45 years of their marriage. Two years ago, roughly, Mina was diagnosed with a serious illness. She received treatment and fought bravely with Tom by her side all the time. Tom was a great source of strength and comfort to her. But in the end, her death came as a bit of a shock. Today, we feel for them, for Tom and for Kelly, who have lost their great friend, Tom's wife, Kelly's mother, totally devoted. Today, here in Edirne, Kulmania, we remember Mina and we give thanks for her life of kindness and generosity and love. Someone once said, nobody is ever completely dead while they are remembered. Mina will surely be remembered by all who knew her and loved her. Today we entrust Mina's soul to the God of love God of creation. May her gentle soul rest in peace. I invite those who are saying the prayers now, please, to come forward. Please stand. Jesus does not leave us to grieve without hope or help. He sends us his Holy Spirit to, to help us. The Holy Spirit who makes us firm in faith and serene in hope. In baptism, Mina was given the promise of eternal life. May she now enjoy forever the company of the saints in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. 
We pray that all who mourn for Mina will find strength and peace in their time of sorrow. Lord, hear us. We pray that those who are ill at home or in hospital will be restored to full health and we pray also for those who care for the sick. Lord, hear us. We pray for all our deceased relations and friends. We remember especially Mina's sister May, her brothers-in-law, Pat, Brendan and Jim. We also remember Sister Bernadette and brothers Father Sean and Colm and all the deceased members of the Monaghan and the McGrath families. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, we believe that those we love and who have died are now alive and living in your kingdom. May their memory be for us the source of strength and inspiration at all times. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. You may be seated now, please. Pray, brothers, sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look 
favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Mina, may be taken up into the glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, <clears throat> for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Larry our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Mina, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. We pause for a moment to remember them. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with Patrick and Bridget, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, 
forever and ever. Amen. Formed by divine teaching, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your let us pray for peace in our hearts, in our homes, in our world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ.
and let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Mina, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me be seated and I invite Tom to say a few words. Reverend Father, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my daughter Kelly and her husband Michael, I want to thank each and every one of you from the bottom of our hearts for coming here today, this evening. It was a beautiful farewell to me. I want to thank the Monaghan family, each and every one of them too, Catherine, who couldn't just make it, but she's in Mina's heart. Maria, Parik, and all their family and all their siblings. And I want to thank all those who traveled here today from all the counties. And special thanks to the Dooley family who traveled in, in, in numbers from our county Armagh. I want to give extra special, extra, extra special to our three priests here, Father Joe, Father Niall, and Father Frank, and the parish, for giving this beautiful, beautiful farewell to Mina. On February 17th, Mina slipped away from us, from Kelly, myself, and Michael. We were there. I was there from the beginning when she, I took her into the hospital because of a fall. As the time went on, I seemed that we were losing her. Her beautiful eyes got bigger and brighter, and they were begging me to help her. She couldn't talk with the mask over her mouth, but I saw in her eyes the words, please help me, Tom. Please help me, Tom. I couldn't. All I could do was cry and pray. And in the moment, the tears and the prayers, I was begging God to keep her. But God wanted her. He took her up into heaven. And the I know in my own heart and soul, he placed her on a throne and crowned her the Queen of Angels. Mina wasn't there long until she saw Sean sitting on his throne as the King of Angels. And both of them now were looking down on us and they're pouring their love and their direction in life for all of us. I can feel that now in this church, this beautiful chapel where I was an altar boy years and years ago. Beautiful memories here. Mina had beautiful memories of Ederney. She loved Ederney. She loved Ederney. She loved Ireland. She was so proud of Ireland. I've heard thousands and thousands of times the same stories over about Patsy Darnian, the McCarveys, the O'Reillys, the Cassidys, the Gallaghers, and the Maguires, and most of all, the McGraths. She used to laugh about Aidan of I. She often said to me, I often wonder how you were brought up. <laughs> I said, You don't want to know me now. <laughs> You can see it right in front of you. Forty-five years ago, I walked down the aisle in New York City. The Mass is celebrated by Father Sean. I walked down the aisle on our journey of life. Forty-five years ago, the next day after I got married, I started my run across the United States of America. Mina 
was there every inch of the way. She sang to me. She talked to me. She walked with me. She fed me. She gave me water and liquids when I needed it. She always had the kettle boiling in the little mobile home that she shared with two strangers. When I'd step in, the kettle was boiled. I didn't have to wait for it to boil. She had the bread buttered and jam. She had my clothes, my running gear, all washed and powdered. She rode the scooter beside me. She even attempted to drive the mobile home. And 53 days and 7 minutes later, covering 3,046 miles, she crossed the finish line carrying the Irish flag in San Francisco. That was some journey, and when she hugged me at the finish line, she said, that was some honeymoon. I'm never doing it again. She even planted the flag, an Irish flag, on top of the Rocky Mountains, a day that I will never forget, 10 or 15,000 feet up in the sky. Now she's in the sky looking down at that, uh, at that flag, and she's looking at us. We had approximately 10 bars in New York, and I can tell you right now, she was the boss. She was a bartender. She was a waitress. She was a porter. She even was a bouncer. And, it, and she could bounce people out, I say. It's just one look that sort of took out of here. I know firsthand. On the lighter side of my little talk, everybody loved Mina. When she was uh, getting medical treatment at NYU Hospital, all the doctors would say, here's the tough little Irish lady again. They called her Philomena. The oncologist dropped his pen one day. We were in the office. And he bent down to pick it up, Dr. Safari. And before he could reach the pen, he had beautiful colored socks. She had him by the socks. And she says, wow, what beautiful socks. And on his way up, she patted his head and said, oh, what lovely curly hair. He stood up and he laughed. And he said, Philomena, I love you. And he meant it. And I said to him, Doc, see what I have to put up with. And he said, you love every second of it. Last of all, but not least, I want to say that Mina gave me life. And the life that she gave me is right here in the front seat my daughter, Kelly. When I see Kelly, I see Mina. When I see Kelly, I see Mina. What better love could she give me than a beautiful daughter, Kelly? We work together, and I can tell you she is Mina. <laughs> Because there's, sometimes you forget the word, excuse me, is to get out of the way. You don't know what you're doing. I'm, I'm getting used to that now. Yes. I want to extend my gratitude to the Monaghan family for giving me Mina for 45 years. I thank you, Catherine. Mairead, Porrick, Ada, who's in South Africa, and John, who's in London. I thank you. Unknowingly, they did me a favor, and I'll explain that briefly. I've met a lot of families when you're in the public bar business in New York, you meet a lot of people. But I've never seen a family so close as the Monaghan family. They would talk to each other from different parts of the world on many, many occasions during the week. And I used to love that. I used to love when Mina would say, hello, Catherine, hello, Maria, or hello, Porrick, because that meant 
they would be babbling for over an hour, and I could have an hour in the gym. And I would come back from the gym, and she'd be still babbling away. And I, when she'd hang up at these nod times, and I'm never talking to them again. There'd be discussions or disputes about a handbag, the color of her hair, or a blouse, or the hairdresser's no good. This all happened. And I'd say, who won the battle tonight, Mina? And the answer would be, you stay quiet and sit down. So I got used to that, but I needed that hour in the gym. That was the favor they were doing me, and I appreciate that. And I'm going to finish off by just saying a few words that's on the back of this little card. Grieve not, nor speak of me with tears, but laugh and talk of me as though I were beside you. I loved you so, it was heaven here with you. And before I go, I just want to mention after the service, immediately after the service, we're having refreshments in the Edernie Gaelic Football Club quarters down the road. Everybody's invited. Please, everybody's invited. I want to thank each and every one of you. May God bless every one of you and God bless Ireland. Thank you, thank you. Likewise, I'd just like to convey it to Tom and Kelly and Michael and the McGrath and Monaghan families uh, the deepest sympathies of all here in Kilmania Parish. I would also uh, just as give you a few directions to um, St. Joseph's GA um, uh, facilities. Uh, they're very close but as if we don't have a straight road to them. <laughs> um, if you want to walk over, first of all, you go out the back here and cross the road and go over by the outdoor sports area over there towards the, the football field and it'll take a, a sort of uh, pathway on the left and that'll take you over to the, to, to the club rooms. If you're driving... Um, go out to the main road or go to the roundabout and take the road towards Lack uh, and it's the second turn on the right on, on the right and when you take that turn take the first turn on the right and that will take you over to the club rooms so and finally I just as regards people if you want to offer your condolences if you, if you have not already done so you can please come forward at, at, at the end of the Mass and uh, please come row by row and uh, maybe I could I thought, uh, I don't know, Tony or Sean or somebody could, could guide people up just row by row and uh, just uh, um, avoid because we're still you know we still have a, pan a pandemic so if you could communicate your sympathies by word rather than physically doing so. So you'll be offered an opportunity to do that after the uh, final prayers of the Mass. Thank you. Thank you, Father Frank, and thank you for and all who, who helped us prepare for the liturgy this evening. And I want to thank Father Niall for travelling from Bell Coo. Uh, I had been in Kiltegan a, few, a day or two ago and drove the whole way back, so very grateful to you. Uh, I'm thank Tom for asking me, inviting me to lead the celebration this evening. Much appreciated. Great honor and privilege. So we ask God to bless you all as we leave the church this evening uh, hope strengthened for being here the Lord be with you 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks.